What's up everybody, I am Just Preet Singh and it's no surprise that cryptocurrency has made a lot of young people interested in investing their money. And naturally when you're a first time investor, you're more prone to making mistakes, especially when it comes to crypto. And no, I'm not talking about those dozens of fake minority mindset accounts that keep responding to your comments asking you to give them cryptocurrency. Please do not respond or give them any cryptocurrency. If you don't see a check next to the YouTube handle, it's not me and I'm not asking you to give me cryptocurrency in your DM. Hey, good looking, wanna wire me some Bitcoin? Oh, hey, how you doing? So what I wanna do today is go over 10 of the biggest cryptocurrency mistakes to avoid. That way you can make some money with cryptocurrency and not be one of those people that's just constantly losing their money in the crypto market. So let me start with number one. You buy cryptocurrency because it's cheap. So let me give you a little example. Let's assume that you find a cryptocurrency on sale for 0.00. .00 one cent. And now if you go in and you buy some of this cryptocurrency, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. But if this cryptocurrency goes up to just a dollar, you can make a lot of money. Like if you just spend a thousand dollars buying this coin and this coin goes up to a dollar, your one thousand dollar investment would grow to one million dollars. Not a bad return for a $1,000 investment and it only has to go up to a dollar. We're not even asking for it to go up to a hundred or a thousand or 10,000. Or if you're a little bit more sophisticated and you don't wanna buy the penny cryptocurrencies and you find a cryptocurrency on sale for say $1,000 a coin and you buy it because you think, what if this is the next Bitcoin and this can shoot up to $60,000. There's a huge return and you have a lot of upside there. But what you're doing wrong is you're not looking at the true price of the cryptocurrency. What you're looking at is the unit cost, but you're not looking at the actual cost of the cryptocurrency itself. You're not looking at the actual value of the cryptocurrency. So what you want to look at isn't the actual price that it's trading for, but you want to look at the market capitalization. You want to look at the value of the coin. You can see the price of Bitcoin is right around $40,000, but the market capitalization is around $730 million. Here's Ethereum. The price of a coin is $2,500 and the market cap is just over $300 million. Here's everybody's favorite Dogecoin, or as I like to call it, Doggy Coin as a price of 11 cents, but the market cap is 15 million. And then you have Shiba Inu with a market price of 0.000023, but it has a market cap of just under 13 million. So you can see that the price per coin of Shiba Inu is so much smaller than Dogecoin, but the market cap isn't that much smaller. Your market cap equals the unit price, which is the price per coin, like a Bitcoin is around $40,000. It's a unit price by the number of shares, the number of units out there. This is why the actual price of a coin can be deceptive because the price of a coin doesn't actually show you the real price of the cryptocurrency. The market cap tells you the actual price of the cryptocurrency, the value of the cryptocurrency, how much money is in there, but the unit price can be manipulated by increasing or decreasing the number of shares. Like Shiba Inu and Doggy Coin had a similar market cap but the reason why they had a similar market cap was because there's so many more shares of Shiba Inu than Doggy Coin. If we go back to Doggy Coin at 11 cents, you see that there's 132 billion doggies in circulating supply, but Shiba Inu has 549,000 billion. So we're talking about 540,000 billion more Shiba Inu circulating than Doggy Coins, which is why the Shiba Inu price is so much smaller at 0 0.00002, even though the market cap of Shiba Inu is 12 billion and the market cap of Doggy Coin is 15 billion, which aren't too far apart. So if you want to know the actual price of the cryptocurrency that you're buying, this is the number you want to pay attention to, not this. Second, you're using debt to finance your cryptocurrency trades, especially if you have no idea what you're doing. So one of the things that's been attracting people to certain cryptocurrency brokerages is easy access to debt or margin or leverage. All of these three things mean the same thing. And what it means is your brokerage account will give you free money to trade cryptocurrency based off of how much money you invest. And what we've been seeing happen is super high leverage amounts, in some cases up to 100 to 1 times, meaning for every $1 you invest, you can borrow another $100 to invest into cryptocurrency. Now, debt makes things riskier. Now, I know people like talking about good debt and bad debt. Bad debt is when you use your debt to go out and finance a Gucci wallet. Good debt is when you use other people's money to go out and buy an investment because now this money is making you richer. But if you don't know how to use the debt and if you don't know how to invest the money, then your good debt is going to turn into bad debt 
pretty quickly. Debt increases risk, whether you're a seasoned investor or whether you're a brand new investor. And especially with something like cryptocurrency that's so volatile, that is so speculative, you do not want to be using debt to finance your investments or your trades. Nobody knows what's going to happen with cryptocurrency tomorrow. We could see a 20% upswing or we could see a 20% crash. That's one of the downsides with crypto is you have so much volatility because it's still a relatively new asset class. And you have a lot of people trading cryptocurrency and there's a lot of emotion and greed behind cryptocurrency, which is also contributing to all the volatility. And so if you're using debt to finance your trading or your investments, well, now you're taking on all the risks because another con with debt or margin or leverage is that if you invest in something and it starts to go down, well, now your broker can force you to sell your investment. So let me give you an example. Let's say you invest into a coin at $100 a coin, and then it goes down to $50. It gets cut in half. Did you lose money? Well, it depends. You only lose money if you sell, because if you don't sell and then it goes back up to $100 a coin and then you sell, you don't make any money, you don't lose any money, you just bought it at 100 and sold it at 100 even though you saw a swing along the way. But if you use debt and you buy it at 100 and now it goes down to 50, but now your brokerage can potentially force you to sell and now cover your losses. So now the brokerage can force you to lose money and they can force you to cover your losses, meaning pay the brokerage, and then if it goes back up, well, you just lost out on this gain. So one of the downfalls with debt is if you start to lose money, your brokerage can force you to cut your losses and they can force you to pay up on your losses, which means you can lose out on a lot of money because now you're not just trading with your own money, you're using somebody else's money and there's a cost to borrowing the money. Not just the interest that you have to pay to borrow that money, but now the added risk. Third, you were emotionally betting your money. And I carefully used the word betting because initially I was gonna use the word investing. You're emotionally investing your money. But the issue with that is when you invest your money, you should have the time span of at least trying to hold your money there in your investment for a year. And a lot of times when people are trying to buy the next hot cryptocurrency, they don't wanna hold it for a year. They wanna flip it as fast as possible for a profit. So then I was gonna say it's emotional trading. But even with trading, you have people that are analyzing a stock, or in this case, a cryptocurrency, you're putting in some sort of analysis. But what's happening a lot of times is people are making emotional bets, where they're seeing what's hot on social media, they're looking at what's hot on Reddit, and then they're just buying it because all of their friends are, and they're hoping that they're gonna get rich quick thanks to a strategy known as YOLO strategy. Now the secret to making money in any investment, whether we're talking about crypto stocks or real estate, is you want to buy low and sell high. But what happens to so many people following this YOLO strategy is you buy high and sell low because you get emotional. You're looking at what's hot, you're waiting to see what the trend is, you're waiting to see what's popular on social media, you're waiting for it to pick up some press on the news and then you come in and buy. And by this time, your cryptocurrency has already picked up so much steam, it's already been rallying for so long, but now you come in and buy because everybody has been making so much money and now it's your turn to rack in on the profits too. And then, as soon as you do that, it starts to turn around. And now it goes lower. And as soon as it starts going lower, you panic because you would just put in your money, you were hoping you would make a whole lot of money very quickly and then you panic and then you sell. And maybe it turns around and it goes up higher or maybe it continues going lower, but this ends up happening for so many people. That's one of the most popular questions on our YouTube channel and one of the most popular questions on Google is why does my investment go down as soon as I buy? I wanna dissect that into two parts. The first part being what is it that you're buying because you have to treat cryptocurrencies like an actual investment if you want to invest your money there. And that means if you wanna be a long-term investor, you you have to do the same fundamental analysis you would do if it was a stock. And you have to do the same fundamental due diligence you would do if it was a real estate investment. That means understand what it is that you're buying. A lot of people have this mentality where they feel, oh man, I missed the opportunity to buy Bitcoin years ago because if I just spent a few thousand dollars buying Bitcoin then, well then I'd be sitting on a beach right now not having to do anything. But because you missed that opportunity, you're now trying to make up for lost time where you're trying to just find the next altcoin that will be the next Bitcoin and you're just throwing your money into it hoping that this new altcoin which you're buying for a few pennies or a few dollars or a couple thousand dollars will run up to what Bitcoin's price is today. Before you put your money into anything, you need to understand what it is that the coin does. And when I say understand what it is, I don't mean watch a YouTube video by the creator of this coin who's pitching you on why this coin is great because anybody can build a hype video or a sales video talking about why their coin is the next best thing. Now, while it's not hard to make one of these sales videos or one of these pitches 
niche videos, what you need to do is you gotta decipher through the noise. And you gotta figure out what's worthwhile and what actually has merit from something that doesn't. One of the easiest things that you can do, especially if you're just getting started, is start with some of the bigger coins. Things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, that way you can get your feet wet and understand what it is that you're buying before you go in and just start yoloing your money into a whole bunch of altcoins that are probably just gonna go bust. Now of course, I gotta tell you that investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest, you might even lose money, so always do your own due diligence and never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube, but this is where you got to do your own due diligence and know what it is that you're buying. If you do not understand what it is you're buying, then you probably shouldn't be putting your money into it. The fourth mistake that you don't wanna make is trying to time the market. It's impossible to predict where this chart is going. What do you think is coming next? Is this chart gonna go up or down? Well, if you thought down, you were right. It went down. What's gonna happen next? Is it gonna go up or down? If you thought up, you're wrong. It went further down. Now what's gonna happen? Is it gonna go up or down? Well, if you said down, you're wrong. Now it's going up. This is kind of a fun game. Let's keep going. Is it gonna go up or down? If you said down, you're wrong. It's gonna keep going up. Now what's gonna happen? Is it gonna go up or down? If you said down, you're wrong again. It went up even higher. Now what? Up or down? Up. Up or down? Down. Up. You can't predict what's gonna happen in cryptocurrency. So one of the easiest things that you can do to avoid trying to time the market is one, buy in faces, and second, use a system called dollar cost averaging. If you didn't get every question right in the game that we just played, then you should not be trying to time the market. Instead of trying to time the market, what you wanna do is you wanna have time in the market, especially if we're talking about an investment that you wanna own for the long term. The reason why this is so important, especially if you're a newer investor, is because people tend to start buying when and things are going up. So things are starting to hit new highs and this is when people get excited and they wanna come in and buy. Now you come in and buy and it starts to go a little bit higher and you feel excited and then it starts to go down. And now if you sell here, you're selling at a huge loss. But if you buy here, you get to come in and buy at a huge sale. Now you don't know if it's gonna go lower or if it's gonna go higher, and in this case, it continued to go lower. So one of the things that you can do is if you buy it in phases, you can buy some here, you can buy some here, you can buy some here, and then you can buy some here. Now when you do that, your actual cost in this cryptocurrency or investment in general is gonna be the average, which is right there. Now this average is a lot better than here and here, and you don't know if this is gonna be the bottom, or if it's gonna keep going lower, or if it's gonna keep going higher. So what you're doing now is you are averaging your cost. Now, it's a lot easier to do this now than before because there's a whole bunch of different systems out there that will let you automatically dollar cost average your buys. Now, this is important with something like cryptocurrency because you do have major swings like this. This might seem a little extreme, but this is what happens in cryptocurrency. Just because it's up today doesn't mean it's gonna be up tomorrow. You can see wild swings up and down, and so what you can do if you wanna save yourself some the mental stress of knowing when to buy is just buying phases. So if you have, let's just say, a thousand dollars to invest, you can break this up into groups. You can invest in 10 different increments of a hundred dollars. You can buy it over the next 10 days at a hundred dollars a day. Or maybe you buy in at ten dollars a day over the next hundred days. What I do is I have a daily dollar cost average system where every day I buy a little bit of Bitcoin, I buy some Ethereum, and then I buy a little bit of some of the smaller coins, but mainly my biggest chunk is going to Bitcoin, a little bit to Ethereum, and then some of the others. Now, make sure you do your own due diligence. Don't just blindly copy what I do, but that's my dollar cost average system because I don't have time to sit here and monitor the markets every single day. I don't have time to sit here and perfectly try to time the market. If there's a big major crash, sure, then I'll come in and buy more aggressively. But other than that, if I just want to keep buying, I have a dollar cost average system that will just keep buying it slowly over time. And this way, it doesn't matter if the market's going up or down. I'll just keep buying it and keep building up my share over time. Now, if you want to do this type of dollar cost average system, you can use a platform like BlockFi. They're a sponsor of Minority Mindset. They make it very simple to buy and sell cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they also have a credit card that pays you back in cryptocurrency instead of cashbacks. If you want to learn more and see how you can open an account with BlockFi, I'll put the link to how you can do that in the description below. The fifth biggest mistake that people have with cryptocurrency is you have no real diversification. So let me break it down like this. This is your investment portfolio. And in this portfolio, you should have different things. Maybe you have stocks, maybe you have real estate, maybe you have some commodities. Now these percentages are completely off. I'm just drawing some examples here. This would be something like gold, some other commodities like that. Maybe you have some cash, and then you have some cryptocurrency. You do not wanna have a portfolio that looks like 100% crypto. 
Now, I know there are some people that have became insanely wealthy because this is what they did, but that's the exception, not the rule. Most people are not gonna become insanely successful or insanely rich by dumping all of the money into cryptocurrency, especially if you don't understand what it is that you're buying just because you're trying to get rich quick. So I do not personally recommend you do this. Now, I understand it's high risk, high potential return, but if you wanna build a sound portfolio, that is not the way to do this. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna have a real diversified portfolio of investments. I own physical real estate. I own stocks. I have my own business. I invest in startup companies. I own physical gold. I keep money in cash and then I have a piece of my portfolio which is also cryptocurrency. That way if cryptocurrency goes to crap, well I'm okay because I have other investments that are there to protect me as well. Now if cryptocurrency goes up to the moon or to Mars, hey, I own a piece of that too, so I get the benefit of that as well. But you don't want to be all in on just one asset class because then you're taking on all the risk. Now, within your cryptocurrency bubble itself, so now this is, if I just diagram focus in on the cryptocurrency part, you wanna have some diversification within your cryptocurrency as well. Now for me personally, again, you gotta figure out what's right for you. My biggest stake in cryptocurrency is Bitcoin because I understand Bitcoin more than the others and I see the value in Bitcoin. I also have Ethereum, which is my second largest coin, but this is where the bulk of my portfolio is. And then I have a little bit of money. I'm gonna make it even smaller than this. That is in the smaller coins. So, so these are more and more speculative. But what you have to understand is when you're investing your money in cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies can go to zero. And so if all of your money is just in the smaller altcoins or the speculative coins, and then you see a major cryptocurrency crash, guess which ones are gonna go bust first? The smaller ones, the altcoins, especially the ones that don't have that big of a use case, that don't have the big of a network. So what you wanna do is you gotta understand that. And if you're just starting off, start by dipping your toes into some of the bigger coins, that way you can understand it. And as you understand more, that's when you can start going to the smaller coins. For me personally, in my cryptocurrency portfolio, this is my biggest stake in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. So while I do have a pretty heavy Bitcoin weighted portfolio in cryptocurrency, I also understand that the reason why I have Bitcoin is because I understand this one the most. And I also understand that if Bitcoin went to nothing, then my cryptocurrency portfolio would essentially go down to very small or go down to essentially zero because of how big it is in my portfolio. But I also understand that there's a reason for me doing that. And I understand the risk that I'm taking with that because it's more than half of my entire cryptocurrency portfolio. So if you're a newer or beginner investor, you want to understand how cryptocurrency plays a part in your overall bigger investment portfolio. And second, you want to understand if you have real diversification in your cryptocurrency portfolio as well. Sixth, you're not giving your cryptocurrency time to grow because you're not patient. You want to see a return on your money tomorrow or if not tomorrow, yesterday. Now this is one of those things that really comes with experience because if you ask anybody, would you rather get rich fast or would you rather get rich slow? Everybody's going to say they'd rather get rich fast. I mean, who wants to wait to get rich if you had that option? But the reality is that true wealth is built over time because you need time for your money to grow. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can buy into something right before it pops, but again, that's the exception, that's not the rule. If you really wanna see the big returns in any investment, especially cryptocurrency, you need to give your money time to grow. And that also means that you have to be patient and control your emotions because between now and then, you're gonna see wild swings up and down and up and down and up and down. And you need to make sure you're patient enough to understand that, hey, I want to give my investment time. And if that's what you're going to do, you have to know your strategy before you go in. Because if you don't know your strategy, you're just buying what's hot and you're hoping to get a big return. Well, then as soon as it starts to go down and you start to see a portfolio in the red, you're going to sell because you panic, because you don't have a strategy to begin with. Which means before you go in and buy, you need to know what your goal is. You need to have your strategy. And then you gotta give your investment some time to grow because if it doesn't have time to grow, it's not gonna be able to give you the big returns. But that also means you have to be willing to cut your losses when you find out that you invested into something that's not a good investment. That is gonna happen. Everybody has bad investments from time to time and you have to be able to recognize that. And if you do recognize that you made a bad investment, those are the ones where you wanna cut your losses sooner rather than later. And yeah, I know it sucks, nobody likes losing money, but if you made a bad investment, you don't wanna double down on your bad investments that keep sinking money into a sinking ship. Those are the ones where you gotta cut your losses, move on and learn from your mistake. The seventh big mistake that people make when it comes to cryptocurrency is you spend more money 
then you're willing to lose. You get excited by the idea of investing into cryptocurrency and doubling your investment in the next six months. You come in and you see that your bank account is $3,000 in there and you know you have to use this money to pay for your rent. You know you have to use this money to pay for your groceries, but if you can turn your three grand into six grand, then what's the big deal? You'll be able to cover all of your expenses and put some money in your pocket. So now, instead of just investing what you can afford to invest, you take $2,800 and you put this money into the market because you hear from your friend that this investment, this cryptocurrency is about to pop. So now you put your money in there and if it doesn't go up, well now you have to sell because you need the cash in order to make a rent payment. And if you're forced to sell when it's down, now you're gonna be forced to take a loss and sell at a time where you don't want to. This is why you want to make sure that when you invest your money, you never invest more than what you're willing to lose. One of the easiest things to do to protect this is just when you invest your money, think of this money as lost money. Think of it as gone. Think of it like you burned it. That way now, if you see a return on your money, because I want you to see a return on your money, well then that's a great thing. But if you lose money, you're not gonna feel so bad, especially if you're a starter investor, because you need to understand that there's gonna be times where you lose money. Now, if you do wanna learn more about how to actually research your cryptocurrency investments and how to make a good cryptocurrency investment, we have a free lesson on our Market Insiders app where our cryptocurrency coach walks you through cryptocurrency, how to invest your money in cryptocurrency, and how to make money in cryptocurrency. You can watch this hour-long lesson for free. If you wanna watch this free lesson, how to invest your money in cryptocurrency, I'll put the link to how you can do that through Market Insiders down in the description below. Mistake number eight is you are glued to the markets. So this used to be a huge problem for traders in the stock market because between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern time, traders would be literally glued to their screens because that's the time that the stock market is open. And then you'd have some time to rest in the evenings and some time to rest on the weekends. But during the days, Monday through Friday, you can't even enter the same room as these people because they're so glued to the screen. With cryptocurrency, it gets a little bit more extreme because the crypto markets don't close. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which means you can be glued to your screen all day and night long. This is not healthy. It's not healthy for your mind. It's not healthy for your body. And it's not healthy for your wallet either. The investors that make the most money, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about crypto stocks, real estate, the investors that make the most money are the people that invest their money for the long term. It is not the traders. And in order for you to do that, you have to be willing to invest your money and let the market do its thing. That means you are doing yourself a disservice when you are sitting there glued to the screen all day and night long trying to perfectly time the market. We talked about this just a couple points ago where if you just have a dollar cost average system set up, if you're just going to be an investor, you don't even have to worry about it. You don't even have to look at the markets. You're gonna be buying every single day or every week, whatever your system is set up as, and then you're just gonna let the market do its thing. You've already done the research, who cares what's happening on the day-to-day -day moves? If it goes down, you buy. If it goes up, you keep buying. If it goes down big, you can buy even more aggressively, but you don't have to be glued to the screen all day and night long because it's doing you a disservice because now what happens when you're constantly watching your investments is as soon as it starts to go down, you start to panic. You start to feel that anxiety. Your heart starts racing. And then it makes you more likely to go out and sell out of panic and fear because you're constantly watching the markets, trying to perfectly time the markets, and you're constantly monitoring your portfolio it's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for your money either. Instead, if you want to be an investor, just invest your money into the markets or set up a dollar cost average system and then just forget about it. Let the market do its thing and give it time to grow. Number nine, you fall in love with your coins. The first time I heard about this concept of not falling in love with your investments was when I started investing in real estate. And it didn't make any sense to me because every real estate book kept saying that you should not fall in love with the real estate deal. And I used to read this and think, why would I not want to do that? Because if I fall in love with my real estate investment, I'm going to want to take better care of it. I'm going to look out for my property better. I'm going to find better tenants. I'm going to find a better property management company. So even though every book that I read said, don't fall in love with the real estate investments, that's what I started to do. And then what ended up happening was I would buy some properties because I really liked them and I liked the way it looked. And then I would get stuck into some of the repairs. I would look at some of these properties, I, I would ignore the profits that we were making, and I would just spend more and more money on repairs to make a property look nice, and then the pipes would burst, and they would keep having tenant issues after tenant issues because there was just so many things wrong fundamentally with the property, but I loved the area, I loved the property, and I wouldn't wanna let it go. But that's when I started to realize that I need to start looking at the numbers more than the emotions. Because sometimes you love the idea of an investment working out more than you actually love the investment itself. And it's the same thing here in cryptocurrency. Sometimes you can fall in love with the idea of a cryptocurrency working out. You can love the idea of this cryptocurrency making you a lot of money. You can love the idea of this blockchain working and taking over the world. But the world might not be ready for it yet. 
and you don't want to be the person that's just sitting there waiting, 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 waiting for the world to adopt it or waiting for this cryptocurrency to change the world when you could be just investing in something that's giving you a return. Because when you're an investor, your goal is to get a return on your money. Your goal is to make money. And if your goal is to make money, you don't want to fall in love with the coin. You don't want to fall in love with the investment. You want to fall in love with the return. And I mentioned this a second ago, because once you fall in love with the coin, it's going to be much harder for you to now cut your losses if you find out that you made a bad investment. So what you need to do is you got to cut the emotional ties and you got to start making financial decisions because once you make just a financial decision, it's going to be much easier for you to cut the emotional losses if things start to go down. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is people see this cryptocurrency go down and it doesn't make sense. This cryptocurrency that you bought is going to change the world. Everybody's going to want to use it. It should be worth so much more. So you go in and you buy more and it goes down more. And then you buy even more aggressively and you keep buying and buying and buying and you're just sinking money into this black hole because you think that this cryptocurrency is the right thing and that it's going to change the world. And maybe it will, but no one knows how long it's going to take. Now, instead of trying to do that, instead of trying to fall in love with the coin, fall in love with the returns, look for the cryptocurrency that's going to give you the right returns. And that means maybe you have to adjust the analysis that you're making right now. And finally, number 10, you are not staying up to date on your education. Now, this is important across every investment class, but it becomes even more important in cryptocurrency because this is such a fast growing industry and you have so much more money flowing into cryptocurrency and the technology and the game is changing very fast, which means you have to keep learning. The rules that applied last year are not the rules that applied this year. And the things that are happening this year are not going to be the same things that are happening next year. So you have to keep learning. So you have to keep investing in your education and you need to stay on top of that because your investments and what's good and what's not good is going to change over time. And you have to stay on top of that, which means you're going to need to stay on top of what's happening in the markets. You're going to have to keep reading what developments are happening. You want to stay on top of your cryptocurrency itself, see what developments are happening, what the developers are doing, what's going on with it. These are the things that you have to pay attention to more in cryptocurrency than anything else because of how fast the market and the technology is developing. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. I talked about our market insiders app where you can get a free lesson down in the description, but you can also watch YouTube videos. You can read blogs. You can read the news posts. You have to stay up to date on what's happening, especially if you have a decent size of your portfolio in cryptocurrency because of how fast things are moving. Plus with all the changes happening in cryptocurrency, you also are starting to see a new wave of regulations come on cryptocurrency, which is something most of us never really have to worry about. I mean, if you invest your money in the stock market, you never really worried about how the SEC is going to regulate the way that you trade or buy stocks because the stock market is an industry that's so ingrained into our society that we never had to worry about these type of regulations but cryptocurrency is so new where you have to see what's going on worldwide you have to see what's going on on the regulation the legal side and then you got to pay attention to the financial and the technical side because all these things are evolving as we speak all that to say well this is the last thing that i'm talking about is definitely not the least important so make sure you're always learning about what you're investing in if you enjoyed this video here's a master class on cryptocurrency that i think you'll love and while you're at it if you want to start generating passive income you can download my free guide on passive income by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. The thing that makes cryptocurrency so interesting is the user ability to use and promote cryptocurrency. Because let's talk about Facebook for a minute. 